So in today's video, I'm going to show you a quick crash course on modeling in Unreal Engine 5. And I'm in Unreal Engine 5.4 right now in a fresh project. Did you know that if you go up to the top left hand corner of your modes in Unreal, you by default are in the selection mode, but if you go down to modeling mode right here, we have all these modeling options. Now, if you don't have this, first off, go up to your settings in the top right hand corner and go to plugins and type in modeling. And you want to make sure that this guy is enabled. It is labeled as in beta. If you don't have it on, you will have to turn it on, restart Unreal. Then you can access the modeling mode in Unreal. So with the modeling mode here, we have a lot of different tabs. Now, I just want to be very clear as someone who makes work for clients and commercials and stuff, I don't do my final models in Unreal. There are certainly projects that could probably take advantage of this, but I will do a lot of my modeling in other software like Cinema 4D, Blender, ZBrush, etc. So you have your create menu here, and this is the first thing that you would typically do to make any model like in any other software. So we could go ahead and click on a box and drop in. If we uh, bring our mouse into our viewport over here, we can see that we are now adding a box. Now, fortunately, we can just click anywhere and it'll place that wherever we want it. Now, there's a lot of different properties that we can adjust for all of our primitive objects. So obviously, we can change the scale, width, height, how many subdivisions is it, and what we could also do is go to our modes here and see a wireframe, and we can see how many polygons we're adding like so, but I just will typically drop in a box like that. You can also set your position. So under your position mode, you can say, hey, on scene, as in wherever we clicked in our viewport, but we can also set this to at origin, and it's just gonna bring it to your world origin world center here. Now, another thing that's worth addressing is if we go back to on scene, we can just go ahead and click. And then we have this delta mode where if we really want to fine tune the position here, we can go ahead and do that. From here with our primitive, we can also go ahead and add a material. I could just find some random material in my actual project and it should add in a material. Awesome. Cool. So let's go ahead and hit accept. Now we have a box in our scene and it's a little weird. And we can see here that in the details panel in the lower right hand corner, we have our location. We have all the general properties. Now I need you to be aware of something. If you now look in your content browser of your Unreal project, there's a new folder and that's called the generated folder. So if I were to double click and take a look, hey, look, it's my user for my computer. And then I also have this new box this new static mesh. Now I need to show you another thing than the way this works. If I go ahead and hold Alt on the keyboard and drag out this box, let's say hypothetically, I scale this up like so. Now we can see here in the details panel of my object, my box number two, I have changed the scale, but this one stayed the same. Now, if we click on this larger box and we look at some of the other tabs in the modeling mode, we have a bunch of different options under this X form property to actually transform it. We can edit the pivot point. Editing the pivot point means we can go ahead and set the origin of this object. So if I hold right click and uh, WASD to move around, I can see that my uh, origin point is at the very bottom. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this is if I click on edit pivot and I set this to center, you're going to see something a little interesting happen. The center of the box changed here, but the other box here, the duplicate also changed for some reason. The reason why that happened is that this box too and the default box are sharing the same mesh reference. So if we go to our static mesh in the lower right hand corner of our details panel, we can see here that the static mesh is now referencing this box 713EE2E8. Now, the reason why that's important is if I had a bunch of different boxes in my scene and I change this box with one of the properties in the modeling mode, it will propagate and adjust every single box in your scene. So if you don't want to change the box, let's say you want to have a specific instance of that box changed separately. Let's say I take this original one, bring it up, 
and scale it around and over. Now we have a new box. What I will do is I will take the original box in my content browser. I will duplicate it and we'll call this box, box two, sweet. And we can just go ahead and replace that. Now, if I go ahead and choose this option called bake transform, if we look at the scale here, the scale is not set to 111 by default, but if I go to bake transform, it's going to take those new scale properties that I did and set it to the new default value. So I can go ahead and hit accept. And now this box, this box right here, and I realize we should call, it, call this box five, sure. Just so we're not, not confused by our outliner. This box now changed but this box, because it's referencing the original box that we made, it, it didn't actually change it. So whenever you're working with your outliner in your generated folder in your content browser, you have to be conscious of whatever static mesh the object in your outliner is referencing to your content browser. Okay, I know I'm getting into the weeds of like technical workflow stuff, but this is important if you're trying to do like scene block out and modeling in Unreal. Because if you're trying to create a scene, then you need to be conscious of how many meshes are in my scene and what is it referencing in my content browser. So if I change one wall, it doesn't affect all the other walls and break the project or break, break the look of the project. Okay. A couple more things I want to show you for this crash course. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make a small room really quick. So with my scale property of the modeling box here, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my scale snapping so I can go ahead and make a little room. So I'm going to use this box number five that we are referencing here. I'm going to go ahead and delete that box and just bring in my wall size like so. And I'm just gonna blow through this really quick and make a little room. So now I took a couple of these boxes and I made a effectively a much larger cube. But if I go inside, here's the inside of the box. And I realized we don't have the backside, so let's just go in there. And now if we go in, it's gonna get very dark because the boxes and cubes are basically blocking all the light from coming in. Now if I go to my selection mode, I can go ahead and drop in a point light. And now we're illuminating light in this room. Awesome, cool. Now, the problem with this is if I go ahead and take any material from the Megascans Marketplace, let me just grab something really quick. Quixel Bridge right here, and I will go ahead and go to my local folder, and let's say I take this metal panels right here, and let's make a mental note of what this looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and add the highest quality to my project here, and I can see here that I have the material in my content browser under the Megascans folder. I'll take this material and just drop it onto that box, and it's weird and stretched and gross. I'm gonna go ahead and select all of the boxes in my scene, and I'm going to take this material and drag it into the material slot of my box. Everything is stretched, everything is weird, everything is gross. I don't like it. So what I can do here is I can go ahead and select my modeling mode once again. And because I know that this box and all these five boxes are referencing the same static mesh, this box five, I can go ahead and change this box and fix my tiling. I could do this in one of two ways. The first is I could actually just go into the material and in my global properties of the Megascans material, if you're using a me Megascans material, this is how it would work. If you make your own material, you would have to set this up separately. But I could go ahead and enable my tiling offset and then just try and get this to match and get it to uh, work. But then if I use this material, this material right here, over and over in my project, I have to keep making duplicates and references and it's really annoying. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and set my tiling back to one and one, like so, and just turn that off. Instead, I'm going to select one of these boxes that, like I said, is referencing this same static mesh, and I'm going to go down to my UV tab here. Now, in the UV tab, we have this button called Auto UVs. Auto UVs will basically look at the mesh and try and distribute the distribution of the polygon so that it looks like a regular sort of texture or image. And if we scroll out, we can see that it's super stretch, but if I click on auto UVs, we can see here that it's definitely trying to do something with the UV. 
but I'm gonna go ahead and switch between the methods to try and give me the thing that I want. Now I did actually do a little boo-boo here. I'm actually gonna rewind really quick, and I'm glad I actually did this. Uh, what we have to do is we have to go back to the xform property and bake transform. And the reason why we do that is if we look at this box, all of these same boxes have a wonky scale that's not an even ratio. So I am going to click on bake transform and I'm gonna hit accept. And now everything is gonna be off and terrible. So now from here, what I need to do is go ahead and remake that cube again. And this is, this is why you have to be conscious of how you set up your primitives in your scene. Now I realize one thing I could do is I could go ahead and select all of my boxes here at the same time, go to bake transform and hit bake. And now from here, we can see here that this box, this box one, which is going to be the left side wall, has a scale of one, one, and one. And if I look at all these other boxes, we can see here that the scale is one, one, one. I actually don't know why the Y property is set to 0.999, but close enough. All right, cool. So now I'm going to go ahead and select this left box and go to UVs and go to auto UV. And now because we bake that transform, it is going to give me an even distribution of this checkerboard pattern. So when I hit accept, all the boxes that reference the same mesh, which is going to be right here, all now have a different UV tiling, as in the material is going to be projected onto the mesh evenly. So now I can go into my actual Megascans material, go to my tiling offset, and I can keep this ratio the same and set this to like five and five. And now we have a tiled material across our little cube object thing. So now when we go inside, this looks a little bit more reasonable. Maybe I can go into that material, set this to like eight and eight. And now we have a, a pretty decent looking room. We have a room. Awesome. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you today is Booleans. And let's say we wanted to add a window to the scene. If you wanted to go ahead and do that, we would go into our create property and add a box. And then let's just drop in a box right here. I'm going to go ahead and reset the material and I will reset my width depth right there and just add a box. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my height and then just push this through the other cube in my scene and make sure that we have a, a window window that's nice and centered awesome maybe i'll increase my width and depth like so except awesome now before you try and bully in this what i would recommend doing we're going to do it right now we're going to select this window wall and we're going to go ahead and duplicate it in our content browser duplicate we'll call this window wall sweet so now i'm going to take this box and replace the reference there now i can go to my boolean tab and if i go to my boolean properties by going to my d4 model there we go so i have my boolean mode under the modeling mode and i select the a property or the, the not the a but like the first one that's this is going to be the one that's going to receive the cut from the boolean so i will select this first box here and then i will hold shift and select my second box and now the boolean mode here is enabled and now if we select it it's going to go ahead and give me a, a window through the thing awesome so i can just go ahead and uh hit accept if i want to change anything i can go ahead and uh, maybe resize this up a little bit under the boolean mode and then hit accept and now we're going to see a new mesh now maybe i didn't have to reduplicate that other mesh but just for demonstration purposes i don't use these tools all the time for like my final scene block out so it did duplicate our mesh which is awesome but now we have a window through our scene and we can see uh, some extra light coming in. If I hit control L with my environment light, we can see, hey, cool. We have a little shadow coming through our scene and our window. So when it comes to the modeling mode, you have a lot of different properties that you can dive into to actually help block out a scene. And what I recommend you do if you're trying to use the modeling mode in Unreal, from my own experience, is use it as a way to block out a scene, but then 
bring other more detailed models into your project to help actually accent this. To actually provide detail and get the highest quality possible, it is generally a practice as of August 2024 to do your, your modeling in Blender, Cinema 4D, ZBrush, texture it in substance, and then bring it into Unreal. But if you wanna do some very basic video game engine-y type look, you could also do this in Unreal, the modeling stuff. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking your ear off. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful and gave you a, an understanding of how the modeling mode works in Unreal Engine. If this was, let me know in the comment section down below. Questions, comments, concerns, whatever else, comment section is down there for that as well. And I'll leave you with the final tip. Eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight you make some. Bye.